Hello and welcome once again to the Lucy Mackenzie Humane Society. Here we are, Paula behind the camera, Roz in front of the camera, the wonderful, wonderful staff at this facility, uh, everywhere, and helping us. And but first and foremost, and most important to start with, is Smokey up there. Isn't he beautiful? So Smokey has a little story and a plea to those of you who are watching. Um, he's a grey, fluffy, and he's four years old. Um, he was adopted. And then he, I don't know why, what happened, but he sort of got passed on, and then he got passed on again, and uh, then he finally came back here. And so he's just having a quiet time now, getting used to the peace uh, and gentleness that we have here. Um, and I would ask people who are watching, please, if an animal that you have adopted doesn't work out, please give us a call. Um, we may be able to just give you advice on the animal. If not, we will take it back. But please don't pass it on, all right? Because that's not good for the animal. And we are always happy to take back an animal that doesn't work. And we actually had one cat who I think was adopted, I don't know, three or four times, wasn't it, Paula? And uh, her people, her person kept, each time she had a person, it was an old person and they died. So anyway, she did eventually get a forever home. So please, um, oh, he's just checking up on the reception desk there. So anyway, Smokey dear, all right, you're going to find a forever home. And he's very sweet, but he definitely wants a forever home and... Somebody who's going, can we do want to shake paws, darling? Yes, that's a good idea. Yes, please come and give him a forever home. Well, have you ever seen anyone quite as handsome as Rico? Oh my goodness, look at the size of those eyes, the way the paws are so delicately posed. Um, I think when I was talking to Amy earlier on, Rico must have realized that he was going to be on camera. And he, he hid himself quickly, ha hastened to here and uh, sort of got himself ready for it. So Rico is another story that I would like to tell. Uh, he was left on our doorstep here. And that is another plead to you all please 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 don't do that we don't know anything about the animal if we find it on the doorstep um, we don't know whether uh, he's had his shots uh, we don't know his temperament we don't know why he was given up we know none of this so therefore he has to have all of his shots again and he has to be temperament tested and um, well he probably would be anyway but it just makes it very difficult for us and um, excuse me Oh, um, and so here he is, handsome, wonderful, has survived being left on a doorstep uh, in a, well, he was in a cat cage thing, but um, nobody really likes to be left on a doorstep. I think there was a story once about someone who was left on a doorstep, the importance of being earnest or something like that. But um, we don't, we do just ask, give us a call first and say, I've got this cat or I've got this dog. I can't manage them anymore for whatever reason. You don't even have to give a reason. Please, could I bring him or her? And we will, of course, welcome that animal. So, anyway, Rico, meanwhile, is very happy here, although he'd rather be in his own home. I have a feeling that Rico is a bit bossy. Um, he looks very much in command of himself. And I think if he came into your household, uh, he would probably want to be in command of you, too. That's all right. We're all run by our animals, let's face it. And, oops, that's nice, Rico. Thank you. To, oh, he says, look at me. I am so handsome. So, um, please come and see Rico, because I think to see him is to fall madly in love with him and put up with being bossed around for the rest of... Rico's life, which I'm sure will be long and prosperous. Well, this is Mavis, and um, Mavis is very petite, very, very different to Rico. She's just very, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody call up immediately. You have to have this cat. You have to have Mavis. 
very tiny. We think she's probably about 10 months old. And Mavis has a history too. Mavis was found behind Staples in West Lebanon. And she was called Mavis because the person who invented Staples was called Mavis Staples. <laughs> so this is Mavis. And um, thank you, Mavis. It was very sweet of you and very polite. Uh, obviously, a very well-mannered cat. And because she's young, she'll fit in beautifully. Uh, neither Mavis or Rico obviously don't mind other cats, so it takes an introduction, because if you already have a cat, it might not want another cat companion. But, the, you know, the Lucy McKenzie will tell you all about that. But I, I absolutely have fallen for Mavis, I just think, to be found, you know, wandering around like that. And, and being called Mavis is uh, after somebody very famous. Um, never, you never know, maybe Mavis will become uh, famous. I think she's a very clever cat. So please, come and see Mavis. And as I say so many times, to see Mavis is to love Mavis. And to love Mavis is just makes it essential for you to take Mavis home. And so, shall I? Well, so please just come and see Mavis and just please take her home. And I apologize for the noise in the background. It's the washing machines. And of course, we have a huge amount of laundry here. So it's all just part of the scenery and everything else when you come to Lucy McKenzie. Phyllis and I are just making friends, aren't we, sweetheart? Oh, wonderful whiskers, really quite. Wizzy whiskers there, yes. So Phyllis is, um, I don't know how old she is, but, uh, you know, sort of middle-aged, I would say. And um, she is a cat that needs very low activity. She gets tired very easily, and she just really likes to sort of lie around. Phyllis, could you just look at the camera? Thank you, dear, because I am talking about it. She needs a stable routine. In other words, she likes her breakfast at 8 o'clock, say, and then she might want a midday snack at 12 o'clock, and then she would want her supper, say, at 5 o'clock, and then we would probably like a little tiny snack uh, when we go to, everybody goes to bed. So that's what suits very quiet, very low activity, um, and a lot of stability in her life, um, and um, so and no stress. So she would really like a quiet household. Um, you know, probably not young children or maybe not noisy teenagers. No, I've got, no, I'm not saying that all teenagers are noisy, but she would probably be very good for um, people who are either living alone or are older and, um, yes, and would just be a nice quiet household for her. And also, I'm getting a great sense of peace from her. Just lovely, you know, just to be here and stroking her and, and um, trying to think, what are you thinking about, Phyllis? She said, well, I'm trying to let people know that I'm uh, highly intelligent. You might say that, Roz, she's saying to me, highly intelligent cat. And again, uh, like uh, other ones that we had today or one other one that we had today, um, she's not demanding, but she just likes her day to be the same every day. And she doesn't want you know, noises and people running in and out and things like that. But she's very sweet, and I really like her. Well, thank you for adopting her. Thank you. This is um, oh Petra, Petra, and. Um, Oh, I've been to Petra. It's in Jordan. So you're rather... An, oh, this, she's an Australian cattle dog, so... Anyway, never mind. Her name is Pat, Petra. Uh, this is Sophie, by the way, just so you don't get them muddled up. Um, and, and you know who I am. Anyway, so Petra is uh, about six years... She's six years old, and um, she uh, was very happily in her household, except that she started um, getting... Uh, not liking the other animals in the house and dogs and I don't know whether there was a cat involved but um, she I think uh, and then there was a baby that was starting to crawl 
and so it just got a little difficult and so there may have been a little jealousy there who knows um, dogs are very very sensitive to what's going on uh, around them and they're clever too and um, so uh, she needs a household with just Petra please this we just want to be an only dog uh, from what I can see of her she's got some training she knew how to sit and um, Petra can you come and sit Petra do you know how to sit can you sit good girl and she's so pretty and she does need a I think she's a little bit overweight so she could do with some good walking long walkies and you like walkies darling do you yes and um, yes uh, and it would be a joy to walk because um, she, you know because she's well trained and she would come when she was called and she walks well on the leash and I just like this dog I think she's she could be a wonderful companion to someone oh by the way she likes trucks too she just told me that she really likes in the front seat of a truck but if you don't have a truck you know that's okay um, she said I'll put out with a car uh, I do like to be in the front seat though uh, if uh, so isn't that right sweetheart yes yes good girl good girl so she says please come and take me home I just want a home I want a loving home and I will be so good to you and I will make such a difference to your life so come and see Petra because if you do you'll fall in love with her okay all right well uh, I've tried this is Bailey I've tried rounding Bailey up but he's Chihuahua Jack Russell and I had a Jack Russell for many years and my experience has been that uh, Jack Russell's like to do their own thing. That's all right. Um, he loves long walks and um, obviously likes little snackies that Sophie is giving him. How, how, let me see, Bailey. Let, let's read this together, what it says about you. Yes, uh, he says that I am three years old and uh, I like cats, uh, but I'm a bit choosy about dogs. Um, maybe really big dogs I don't know what's so, but anyway he's quite he's quite choosy you know Jack Russell's have really have a mind of their own I know that my Bessie you know my gosh she uh, she would uh, she would do her own thing but they're a lot of fun and they're very amusing they have a great sense of humor Jack Russell's and um, so she and she loves walks she loves the car um, she would rather not have children in the house, in her household, unless they were older and that they were respectful to her. Um, you know, she knows her own worth and she, because she's very small, you know, she doesn't want, um, she doesn't want little children who, you know, might hurt her and then she might hurt them and all of that, but probably not. But, um, you know, so older children, probably 16, 17, who are respectful to her. So maybe, you know, if your children are growing up and going out into the world and you're facing an empty nest, then here you are. You've got Bailey. And, um, isn't that right, Bailey? She's a cute, cute, cute little dog. And um, Chihuahuas are very loving, too. So it's a, it's a good mix. I, actually, I see a lot of that mix recently, just a lot. So she's, she's a personality and she will give you a lot of laughs and she would really like to have her own home and her own place as only dog. But she would be happy with a cat companion. So please, come and see Bailey and um, give her a walk while you're here. And I think during that walk, a lot of things are going to go on in your mind. And one of them will be that you do not want to leave here without Bailey. So we have something a little unusual for you here. This is Duncan, as in donuts, um, and uh, he is a black Norwegian, what was it, forest cat. Yes, I've never met one. And anyway, Duncan is very sweet. Um, he was given up due to a move uh, in the family. He was much loved, much loved. And um, he's now a, very, a bit nervous about being here. He's not quite sure you know why he's here and what happened to his family so he really he's going to need a bit of of loving careful care and um, you know to learn to trust you 
and realize that he has a new family who are as loving as his old family. Isn't that right, Duncan? Yeah, gosh, he's, he's big and he's very, very sweet. Aren't you, sweetheart? He is actually very sweet-natured. And he is about, I think he's about six years old, Duncan, so he's just a young lad. And um, I feel very sorry for him being in here because he really doesn't know what happened to his life. One moment there he was with his family and friends and routine, and the next moment he's in here where he's treated very lovingly. But what happened to everything else? So um, the other thing is he was an indoor-outdoor cat. But um, if I can speak to the subject, as I often do, please, if you can keep him as an indoor cat because cats who go outside uh, face such a high risk of being killed by foxes and uh, coyotes and all sorts of things like that uh, animals other animals um, they can get caught in traps um, and then you, you don't find them um, and also they kill billions and billions literally of songbirds and there is a sharp decline in songbirds going on at the moment um, so, uh, as there is of insects, too. So, um, if you could keep Duncan inside, it would be wonderful. And maybe you have a screened-in porch where he could be and see what was going on outside. But anyway, isn't that right, Duncan? He has a rather, not a proud look. I wouldn't say it was a haughty look, but he really looks you in the eyes, don't you, sweetheart? You really do. Yeah, he says, I'm, I'm proud to be a black Norwegian forest cat. And um, I, just, I just want a loving home with people who will give their hearts to me, and I will give my heart right back. Okay. Well, we're here we have the most beautiful dog with the most beautiful name. Her name is Cadence, and um, as you can see, she's very alert. Uh, I just think she's very beautiful. Um, look at her standing like that. She probably is a mix. But then we're all mixes, aren't we? Irish, Hungarian, you name it. Uh, but, so, but so nobody's exactly sure, and she doesn't care. She said, I'm beautiful, I'm clever, I love, love, love long hikes, uh, very much. So she is a dog that needs a lot of, um, a lot of exercise. Um, and um, she is six years old. Three. Oh, sorry. Ooh, thank you, Sophie. She is three years old. Um, and um, probably not cats, um, because she's obviously, you know, a, some sort of a hunting dog, and that's not always a good idea to have cats around. So, um, <laughs> but she's raring to go. Do you ever put her in the pen over there? We yes, do. and just let her go free. She will take, I'd love to see she will that. Take a ball and amuse herself. Yes, she absolutely. Oh, she loves ballies. Oh, that's good. Um, and the other, and she obviously doesn't mind going, um, going in a car. Um, what about uh, children? Older ones. Older ones, older because she is a big and she could bounce, uh, so you don't want any older people like me or young, younger children, probably teenagers. And my bet is if you're practicing soccer somewhere, she'd really like to, she'd really enjoy joining in that one. Or, or even baseball, but of course she might go off with the ball then. So, but, <laughs> but she's very sweet and uh, she's been here for a little while. Uh, but she's, uh, as I say, she's only three. She's got many, many years ahead of her with you. Um, and, uh, and I also think this dog is very intelligent. She's got a, a very, you know, bright look. I think you could have a lot of fun with her. And the other thing that she would love to do is, um, I wonder, can you sit, Cadence? Cadence, can you sit? Cadence? Okay. Okay. Good girl. And I wonder if she's ever done agility because We've tried her. Tried her. I think she would love agility um, because, you know, in going through these tunnels and then jumping things. And, and if you're at her, if she, you know, you could always make one for her at home to make her jumps for her and tunnels. And, but also classes because she would be with other dogs and, you know, having fun. So, um, I, I, yes, I, I, I like this dog. I think uh, she's, as I said, but she does need a lot of exercise. So if you're a hiker and a walker, perfect dog for you. And um, that's right. She's been here for a little while, but um, not too long. Anyway. Maybe two months. Oh, only weeks, two months. Yes, two months. that's not very long. No. And honestly, Cadence, dear, 
like us all, all we want is a happy home. And um, some of, you know, so that just wants you to come and take her home. And um, the cadence, yes, I mean, you've got a lovely back view, but we'd rather see your front view. <laughs> yeah, before we say goodbye to the camera, sweetheart. Cadence, can you, can you just say goodbye, everybody? Come and take me home, please, please. Yeah. Well, we've shown you some wonderful animals. They all need you, so please come and see them whether you're sure or not, because we just need you. Tell your friends about Lucy McKenzie and all the wonderful things they do and all of the lovely animals and loving animals that desperately need a home. Everything in this world needs a home, so please think about that. And thank you for watching. And from Paula behind the camera, and Roz in front of the camera, and everybody here at Lucy McKenzie Humane Society, thank you, thank you, thank you. Take care of yourselves and have great walkies. Thank you.